Um, this, this is my camera. This is called a, a Sony Z1. This is a, an HD camera, which is, um, I guess, the difference between these kind of cameras is the, the functionality and how many things you can customize. This has automatic functions, but it's got a whole bunch of manual functions as well. So you can adjust things like um, the audio levels and, and the white balance and the type of picture. And some of these things will do that as well. Um, and when I, does everyone know what I mean when I talk about white balance? That's like, you know when you watch a video and it can look really blue or it can look really orange or it can look, um, you know, like different colors. What that is is the, the white balance basically is, sets, the, um, sets the mark for the whole spectrum of light. So once you get your white balance right, then all the other colors fall into place. Now, um, you might see this often, like when, when I'm going to shoot with this, you get someone to stand there with a white piece of paper, like an absolute white color. You zoom in and you set a white balance to it, and that will balance out all the other colors. With these kind of cameras, you can often choose them. It'll say, like, I want to do an indoor or I want to do outdoor, because different types of light have a different, uh, you know, different temperature on the color spectrum. Daylight is very blue, um, and it's kind of made more so, I think, by the polarizing on these windows. But most daylight is very blue. Tungsten lights, indoor lights are warmer, like pinky, you know, reds and things like that. So um, cameras need to be able to balance those things. And something like this is, is much better at doing something like that. Now, I don't know how many of you would need to use something like this. Um, yeah, I mean, they're expensive. Like this is probably new. It's probably about $7,000. Um, but they're workhorses, they're fantastic cameras. But again, it's, it's, uh, it's a video camera. And uh, the one thing about video is that generally it keeps everything in focus. You know, when you see a video, uh, most of the ones we've done, everything is in focus. Um, whereas when you move into like higher end film cameras with different lenses on them, that's when you can start to get uh, different depth of field. Does everyone know about depth of field? You know, when you, you're watching a movie and the subject is in focus and the person behind everything else is blurred out. That's your depth of field. And that, that basically is telling your eye where to look, where they want you to concentrate on. Now, something like this can achieve that, but it's usually from further away. The last camera I'll show you, and this is my new toy, is, um, is the, the digital SLR cameras. You guys all, anyone played around with one of these? Yep. <coughs> now, these cameras are taking the world by storm in terms of film and video at the moment. They're starting to shoot television shows, indie feature films. They'll start to shoot more feature films on them as well, um, commercials. The advantage of these things is that they have a massive sensor because it's all about basically the way cameras work is it's the amount of light that comes in and gets captured by a sensor that reads the information. Now, with this, it is, um, it's made for digital stills, which is, you know, like, which takes in a lot of information. You know, when something's like 18 megapixels or something, it's, it's very sensitive. So it takes in more information, basically. Now, the beauty of these is that you can change lenses on them, which gives you different looks. So I've started using this, and it's absolutely changed the, the quality of the work that I do, because I get a much more filmic look, and it just kind of ups the kind of level of what it is. Now, this, th these cameras are, again, coming down in price. Um, this one's about $1,000 for the body, and then you buy the lenses on top of that. Um, now, like, th th this is something you'd be interested in. It's th they are fantastic. Again, nothing is perfect. This has uh, limitations in the quality of the audio. These weren't made to be proper you know, video cameras, so the quality of the audio isn't fantastic. Um, but there are ways around that you can get external audio and things like that. But um, if you want in the break, you can come and have a play with this and I'll show you around. But yeah. So with the videos, at each stage that Ben's going to take you through, you want to, in your mind, think what's going to be right for my situation and just make a choice. So start to circle in your, pa in your area, I think <coughs> that camera's going to be right for me. I think if you're just getting started out and you want to do it on a low budget, you might look at the Kodak and the Flip. You might move into the Handycam or that, that last uh, DSLR camera as well, shift there. Just try and get a gauge at where you're at, maybe what you've got, what you want to get. You know, that, that's pretty much what this the aim of this section is, just so yeah, you yeah. feel like I know what I should get. 
And obviously, I mean, you can go into so much more detail about just one of these things, but it's just giving you an overview of the kind of spectrum that, that's out there.